Here's problem 15.1. A body of mass 5 kilograms is suspended by a spring which stretches 10 centimeters when the mass is attached. It is then displaced downward an additional 5 centimeters and released. Its position as a function of time is approximately... Alright, so we start with the spring. It's got some kind of spring constant K, which we don't know. But we do know that when we put 5 kilograms on there, that's actually going to stretch a distance equal to 10 centimeters, 0.1 meters. All right, so that will establish a new equilibrium position. So if I were to do a free body diagram at this new position, I would find that there would be weight, mg, pulling down like this, and then there would be a force equal to kx pulling up like that, and the two would be canceling out so that we'd establish this new equilibrium position. We can use that idea to figure out what the k constant is because it should be true that kx is equal to mg if we're in equilibrium. So that means that our k is going to equal mg divided by x and that's going to be <coughs> uh, 5 kilograms sorry, times 9.8 divided by x 0.1 so that's 49 divided by 0.1 or 490 newtons per meter. So that is our spring constant. And that should be an intrinsic value for the spring. In other words, it's not going to change. That is truly the value of the spring constant for that spring. So when we try a different situation, that will still be the k value for the spring. Now, the way things look now is we have a spring. It's stretched but it's reached a new equilibrium position and the k constant of course is now 490 newtons per meter. Now we're told that we stretch an additional 5 centimeters from this point so we're going to go down 5 centimeters, 0 0.05 meters to a new point and then we're going to we're going to let go. So that truly will be the amplitude of our oscillation because it's gone as far as it can go and then it's going to oscillate up and down between those points. So our equilibrium position being zero in the middle and then our amplitude here you could say a negative amplitude, positive amplitude of five centimeters on either side of that equilibrium position. Now we also know that at t equals zero we had pulled it down to the full amplitude and hence it's going to start at that amplitude at t equals zero which means we want to use a cosine function to describe this motion not a sine function because the sine function starts at zero at zero and here we're going to start at one at zero in other words full amplitude at zero so in general our y position is going to equal some amplitude times the cosine omega t plus phi and in this case phi is going to be zero because we're starting at full maximum amplitude at t equals zero cosine of zero will be one and hence we don't need a phase angle we're already at that maximum amplitude at t equals zero alright so it's simply going to be a cosine omega t and our a is this five centimeters so this is the way it's looking right now, 0 0.05 cosine omega t. Now omega is equal to the square root of k over m. And in this case, our k is 490. The m that we're using for this is 5 kilograms. So we have omega is the square root of 490 divided by 5, which would be the square root of 98. And that is 9.9 .9 radians per second. So now we can plug that in there to omega. So our equation for this motion is going to be y is equal to 0 0.05 meters 
cosine 9.9t with no phase angle. That is our equation of motion for all time. And uh, so that's, that's what we want.